Hello, and welcome to HealthierMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at examples of multiplying rational expressions. But first, let's review multiplying two rational numbers, because we need to have this skill in order to be able to multiply two rational expressions. So the example we're going to go with is 3 fourteenths times 7 ninths. First, we're going to simplify any common factors between the numerator and denominator. And while there is another method that we could use, we could multiply across first and then simplify, I find this to be better because first, then I, I get to deal with smaller factors, which is always nice. And second, this is what we want to do in order to be able to multiply two rational expressions, so we'll just go ahead and do it. Okay, so we're looking for common factors between any factor of the numerator and any factor of the denominator, such as here, 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3. So I'm going to divide them each by 3. And then I'm going to do the same thing with 7 and 14, which are both divisible by 7. Second, I'm going to multiply the numerators together. 1 times 1 is 1. Third, I'm going to multiply the denominators together. 2 times 3 is 6. And then it doesn't hurt to check to make sure the numerator and denominator only have a common factor of 1. Since the numerator is 1, of course, there can't be a common factor besides 1. So I feel pretty good that this is the right answer. So we simplify first, then we're going to multiply the numerators, then we multiply the denominators. Okay, basically I just said, how will we multiply two rational expressions? But the only difference between, well not the only difference, one of the main differences between rational expressions and rational numbers is with numbers we generally know the factors of those numbers. So I can look at 18 and I know 2 goes into it, I know 3 goes into it, but if I look at x squared plus 5x plus 4, the factors don't jump out at me as quickly. So we actually have a step first. Uh, before we go into the steps from the previous slide, and whether you took my advice or not on the last slide, now you really want to follow it. But first we're going to do something. We're going to factor each the numerator, uh, each numerator and each denominator. Then we'll simplify any common factors we see, we'll multiply the remaining factors of the numerator together, and we'll multiply the remaining factors of the denominator together. And you might want to check with your instructor about whether you can leave factors factored or if you need to actually distribute and multiply. So let's look at an example of just multiplying where we have just monomials in the numerators and monomials in the denominators. Now this one, I mean, I know I just said, uh, you know, don't worry about multiplying first, but maybe with the, the variables, you might want to simplify the numerator and denominator, the numbers maybe not. That's really up to you, whatever makes the most sense to you. So if we do that, it might be just helpful to just have one factor of P in the numerator. I have p squared and p uh, cubed, so I'm going to write down 14 times 6 times p to the fifth, and then I have 1n, 2 more, so that's n cubed. And in the denominator, I have 2 times 7. Here I have p squared, p times p, and n cubed times n to the fourth would be n to the seventh. Now I'm going to look for my common factors, so actually 2 times 7 is 14 which would just cancel there. You can do that in two steps too. You can simplify out the, the two from the two and the 14 and then 14 would become seven and then you can simplify out the sevens, but one step is nice. All right, I have five fact factors of P in the numerator and two in the denominator. That means I'm ultimately gonna be left with three factors of P in the numerator. I have three factors of N in the numerator and seven in the denominator. That means that ultimately I'm gonna be left with four in the denominator. So now we're gonna multiply straight across. 1 times 6 times p cubed is 6p cubed. And in the denominator, the only non-1 factor is n to the fourth. So this would be my final product. In this example, we have three factors to multiply together. I noticed that the last factor does not have a fraction, so I'm going to rewrite this and put 7x squared over 1. While I'm rewriting it, I'm also going to factor. So 3, we're going to leave as 3. x squared minus 2x. Those two uh, terms have a GCF of x, so we're going to factor that out, giving me x minus 2. So now I have two factors, x and x minus 2. The second numerator, 2x minus 4, the 2x and 4 have a greatest common factor of 2, so I'm going to factor that out. That's going to leave me with x minus 2. So I have two factors there. x is just going to be a single factor, and 7x squared we're just going to put over 1. So now I'm looking for common factors that I see between the numerator and the denominator. Since all of the numbers are in the numerator, I know I won't be able to simplify those numbers. Uh, let's see, I have a factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. I also see I have one factor of x here in the denominator and another here. That would be x squared, which would simplify with that x squared. So actually, all the variables canceled, 
leaving me with 3 times 2 is 6 times 4 uh, times 7 is 42 over 1, which would just be 42. It's pretty rare that we're actually going to end up with a numerical answer when we simplify rational expressions, but hey, it happens. Let's try another example. So first thing I want to do, simplify each numerator and each denominator. I'm going to start with the top left corner, this one right here. 2x minus 10, there's a GCF of 2. That would become 2 times x minus 5. Now I'm going to look at the denominator right below it here. x squared minus 25, that's a difference of squares. So that will factor into x minus 5 times x plus 5. The top right corner, I have x squared plus 7x plus 10. That's a trinomial and the target product is 10, target sum is 7, uh, that would be 5 and 2, and I can use the shortcut since the leading coefficient is 1, x plus 5 times x plus 2. This is just a single factor, x plus 2. So either I can simplify out x plus 2, the whole thing, or nothing at all. Now that everything's factored, this is the fun part. There's a factor of x minus 5 in the hey, numerator and denominator. Here's a factor of x plus 5 in the numerator and denominator x plus 2's will cancel, oh my gosh, and again we end up with just that single product of 2. Uh, it would be 2 over 1, but 2 divided by 1 is 2. This example that couldn't wait and it kept jumping forward to it, uh, again we want to factor first, x squared minus 6x plus 9 up here, that's going to factor into x minus 3 uh, squared, which we're just going to write out x minus 3 times x minus 3 so I don't have to deal with exponents. The denominator, x squared minus 3x plus 9, I don't think that's factorable, so that's just itself its own factor. Either we're going to be able to simplify the entire thing or nothing at all. x squared plus 27, that's a sum of cubes. That factors into root plus root, and then root squared minus the product of the two roots plus the second root squared. And 3x minus 9, there's a GCF of 3 leaving me with x minus 3. So now we're going to simplify what we can. There's a factor of x minus 3 in the numerator and denominator. This beast does end up simplifying because there was a factor in the numerator when we uh, factored the sum of cubes. And that's it. So what are we left with in the numerator? x minus 3 times x plus 3. And in the denominator we have a factor of 3. And this is where you want to ask your instructor if you can leave this as your final answer or if you need to multiply the x minus 3 and x plus 3. If you don't have to multiply, I suggest leaving this as your final answer. If you do have to, then, then you have to and that's fine too. Alright, last example. Uh, the, new, the first, the top left numerator, that's also a perfect square trinomial, but we're going to write it out. It's going to be w plus 2 times w plus 2. Right below it, 2w minus 6, there's a GCF of 2, giving me w minus 3. w squared minus 9, that's a difference of squares, that's going to factor into w minus 3 times w plus 3. And then the bottom right hand corner, there's a GCF of 5, that would be 5 times w plus 2. Let's see what we can simplify. w plus 2, there's a factor in the numerator and denominator. w minus 3, there's a factor in the numerator and denominator. And then we end up with w plus 2 times w plus 3 all over, we have 2 times 5 all over 10. Thank you for stopping.